Welcome to Photoshop and today we're going to be going over Puppet Warp. So it's up here in the edit menu and it's probably something that you've never actually known what it does or have any idea how to use it. So today I'm going to give you a quick overview of how to use Puppet Warp. It's not something you're going to be using very often, I can tell you that for right now. So I've got this elephant, it's already selected, but I'm going to go ahead and make a selection on the negative area and then I'm going to hit Command Shift S, I mean Command Shift I on a Mac or Control Shift I on a PC. And what that's going to do is now it's just going to select the elephant instead of the background. So we will come up here and go to, down to Puppet Warp. And when you get into Puppet Warp, you're going to see this triangular grid that it lays over top of it. If you want to turn that off, you can go to Show Mesh or Show Mesh On. Then we have different modes. This is going to affect how it works. So we have a rigid, a normal, and a distort. So I'm going to leave it on normal just for now. It's one of those things you can go into and kind of try it and see how it applies and affects the image a little bit differently than the other modes. Next thing that we have here are fewer points. So it's going to have fewer points. We're going to have more points. And today we're just going to do normal because it's I don't want to make it too complicated. But obviously you have more points. You're going to have more control over how this works. And the last thing we have is this expansion. And so what's this doing right now by two pixels? It's expanding my selection by two pixels. So if I go up, you can see it expands outward. And if I was to go in the negative, it would come inside my selection. But we're going to go ahead and leave it at two pixels. And that should work good. So how this works is you set points. So think of them as anchor points. So if I set an anchor point here in the center, and then I go out to the trunk and set another one, if I rotate this, it's going to rotate around this anchor point. Now it's still going to let me control or move this trunk, but it's also rotating at the same time around that anchor point. So we're going to go ahead and delete this anchor point so I'm going to right click or control uh, click on a Mac and we'll delete that pin so whenever you want to delete a pin you go over to it and I'm going to right click and delete that pin so we're back to the normal here so let's say I want to change this trunk I don't want it in this direction so if I come up here and set an anchor point this is where it's going to rotate or bend from and then if I come down and set another anchor point down here, and then I lock the feet so they can't move, and I rotate this, you can see now we're just moving that trunk, and I can adjust it. Now the body is moving a little bit because I haven't locked it up in here with anchor points as well. So the more anchor points you put, the more control you have over a specific area. So let's say I want to put an anchor point here and then one on his lip. I can kind of close this lip a little bit. And so we've kind of closed that lip. So we're going to come back down here and delete these pins that we have. So I'm just right clicking because I have a PC mouse on a Mac. That's control click. So what we're going to do is I'm going to set an anchor point here and I don't want these to move so I'm going to anchor those and then I'm just going to put one right here so what I want to do is sort of rotate this animal at this point so if I come here now it lets me bend these feet back and then let's say I put an anchor point here it's, and I want to rotate these back up so it looks like it's flat I can come here and put another one and rotate this up so it looks like it's flat and then I can come in here and delete that pin, delete that pin. I can put another anchor point right here on his little leg and then put one down here. And then that's going to allow me to rotate these feet in. And just like I did before, if I wanted to rotate these back out, I can click on a point and drag this down. And now we've moved his feet in. 
So right now this back leg is in front of this front right leg, which we don't want. So if I want to move this to the back, I can come here and just say, hey, I want to rotate that to the back. And it's going to take this part and stick it behind that part. So just like you could put something in front, you can put it behind as well. And then if I'm happy with that, I can go ahead and click OK. And it'll kind of rasterize it. And there we go. We've adjusted or warped or manipulated this elephant how we want. So that's one way in which Puppet Warp works. All right, so we have this tulip here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a selection of the white. And then I'm gonna do Command Shift I again to inverse that. It's Control Shift I on a PC. And then down here, I'm going to add a mask. So now we've turned the background translucent. So you wanna make sure you have a translucent background. Otherwise, it's just gonna leave a translucent space and look kind of funky. That also got rid of the bat being a background locked layer. Puppet won't work on a locked background layer. So we're going to come up here and go to Edit, Puppet Warp, and it's going to make the selection of that area. And I can come in here and lock my bottom down and then put one here and then put a pin here. And I can just kind of slide this over. I'm going to actually come and put a pin here and slide it back over this way. And then I'm going to put a pin up here. And then I can straighten this out this way. I can put a pin up here and then straighten the flower out that way. It's not perfect, but you get the idea. So if I wanted to adjust this leaf and move it over, I could put a pin up there and slide that up. Then I can put another pin down here and slide it this way. And if I want to straighten that tip out a little bit, I can come over here and apply it like that. Hit the check mark and then you can see Voila, just like that, we've warped and made this more of a vertical or straight looking tulip if that's what we wanted to do. So hopefully that was helpful. You learned how to use Puppet Warp today. Any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And don't forget to subscribe.